Exercise, let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, so exercise is defined as any activity that requires physical effort with the goal of improving or sustaining health and fitness. So there's a lot of examples of, of, of what constitutes exercise, walking, jogging, riding a bike, playing sports, uh, lifting weights, yoga, all kinds of things are potential options here. The main point is that exercise should not be intimidating. Um, exercise, I think, has been made to be um, this hardcore kind of exclusive thing, especially if you're going to a gym and you know, all these people in good shape and people say, gosh, I'm out of shape or am I going to look silly? Uh, you know, first of all, don't let that stop you because most people aren't watching you anyway. They're, they're focused on their own workout, but I understand there's some, some, uh, some self-esteem or self-confidence issues that can arise from exercising, especially if it's in public. Um, but I don't want it to be intimidating. So if you're in an environment that's intimidating for you, find another environment um, to exercise, whether that's at a gym or in your neighborhood or in your home, wherever it may be, um, you need to feel comfortable, but don't feel intimidated. Um, in terms of, of the benefits from exercise, there was a large study of over 1 million adults. Um, they found that exercise uh, conducted regularly lowers the risk of developing 13 different types of cancer. And other studies have, have confirmed these results. So, so this is something we've seen across multiple studies uh, in terms of the benefits of exercise. Um, I've always said that if exercise were a drug that could be patented, it would be worth billions of dollars. Um, researchers believe that exercise reduces the risk of cancer um, in several ways. First of all, first off, it reduces weight. So we know that, that as you lose weight, your cancer risk goes down. Um, it reduces insulin, um, which is going to be important for, uh, for blood sugar reasons. Um, and also because cancer is heavily reliant on insulin, cancer has many, many insulin receptors on its surface, uh, more so than normal cells do. And so by reducing insulin, um, any cancer cells that may already be there are, are going to be less stimulated. Um, we know that exercise improves immune function, so we're going to have a stronger immune system. Um, uh, can exercise reduces inflammation, which again is a, is, a, uh, is, a, is a risk factor for cancer. And then finally, we can't uh, minimize the fact that exercise reduces stress, it improves mood, um, and, and having lower stress and better mood are, are also going to contribute to a, a greater uh, reduction in risk for cancer. And I want to just add here as well that it's important to recognize the cost of not exercising. So, so when we look at people who have a sedentary lifestyle, research has shown um, they have a dramatically increased risk of developing cancer as well as a host of other um, chronic medical conditions, whether it be diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, uh, you name it, it typically is going to go up uh, with a more sedentary lifestyle. And interestingly, they've, interestingly, they've done research on um, a sedentary lifestyle and the risk of premature death. And, and sedentary lifestyle absolutely increases the risk of, of dying earlier. So it's important to get moving for a lot of reasons. Um, in patients who already have cancer, exercise is still extremely important. Um, exercise has been shown in studies to reduce cancer-related fatigue. Uh, it's been shown to improve mood, and it's also been shown to prolong survival. Um, interestingly, there have been some mouse studies which showed that exercise uh, improves health of blood vessels. Um, uh, and of course, if blood vessels are healthier, then that's going to increase the amount of chemotherapy and other treatments um, increase their ability of getting those treatments to the cancer better and can actually reduce the amount of, of chemotherapy and other drugs that we have to use. And so we'll talk about that shortly um, in how I, I treat my patients with cancer. Um, but using lower doses of chemotherapy is uh, really important. So how much exercise? So, so minimum physical activity recommendations um, for patients uh, with cancer is, is pretty much the same as for uh, patients who don't have cancer in the general population. 150 minutes a week is your goal uh, if it's moderate intensity activity. If you're doing vigorous activity, a vigorous intensity activity, about 75 minutes a week is your goal. Um, resistance training should be part of that. That should be you know, a couple of days a week. And I think balance and flexibility training is important as well, um, especially um, if you're over age 60. So, so to reach the exercise goal we're talking about here, um, that could mean walking for about 20 to 25 minutes, uh, four days a week. Um, it could include uh, performing resistance training for 30 minutes, two days a week, and then doing some stretching and balance work one to two days a week. That gets you to your goal. 
Um, and if you need to start with a lot less than that, that's okay. Um, again, exercise doesn't have to be intimidating and it's not an all or nothing proposition. Um, start where you are, you'll be aware of your current fitness level, um, any injuries or, or other predisposing factors you may have start where you are and gradually improve. And what you'll find is that you will quickly adapt and adjust to exercise. You'll find that you'll progress pretty quickly once you get into a regular, uh, exercise routine. And as always, consult your physician before uh, starting an exercise regimen. Make sure it's, it's safe for you. And again, exercise should not be intimidating. Uh, don't worry about what anyone else thinks. This is all about you. Um, choose activities that appeal to you that you think you'll enjoy. Um, yes, you will be exerting yourself. You probably will be um, a little uncomfortable, but, uh, but, but make it something you enjoy if possible. And uh, try to achieve a good balance between pushing yourself and challenging yourself, uh, but not overdoing it. And uh, certainly don't be afraid to ask for help. There's a lot of people out there that can help you, whether it's uh, a friend or family member, a personal trainer, um, or, or there's a lot of good resources online these days as well, even, even just looking on YouTube. So um, don't be afraid to ask for help. I'd like to also talk about mindset. Um, you know, don't scoff at the importance of taking control of your, your thoughts. Um, your thoughts and, and your words as well are really important. Um, research has shown that there are brain body pathways that influence the development and the progression of cancer. And one study actually looked at people who have had uh, what they call striking life events. These are major traumas, divorce, a loss of a loved one. Um, and they looked at how that affected cancer development. And they found that women who've had a significant uh, negative uh, life event uh, were found to have a significantly increased risk of breast cancer. Um, and in women who, uh, had severely striking life events, even more serious, uh, type of, of traumas, uh, emotionally, um, had an even higher risk than that. So, so our emotions do play a big role in our health, including our, our risk for getting cancer. Um, but, but the good news is you can harness the power of your mind to positively impact, uh, your physiology and biochemistry as well. There was one study that, that I love. It looked at, at women with breast cancer. They had two groups. One group got the standard of care. And these women got the usual surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Um, the other group of women also got the standard of care, but then they also uh, were part of some small group sessions where they were taught uh, things like deep breathing, uh, relaxation, meditation, and they're even taught to envision their immune system cells gobbling up cancer cells uh, in their body and being rid of cancer. And the results were pretty significant. The women in the, the second group that had standard of care treatment plus these uh, what we call mind body therapy interventions um, had improved immune system function, less stress, um, overall improved quality of life. And so it made a real difference for them. So improving your mindset uh, is, is easily uh, discussed, but a little bit harder uh, to actually do for some people. Um, but, but it is something anyone can do. Uh, it involves practicing seeing yourself well, um, despite how you might feel, uh, whether you have cancer or not. Um, seeing yourself well, um, allowing yourself to go through what we call guided imagery to, to envision uh, the health of your body down to your cells, down to your blood vessels um, is, is really important. The power of your words, I think, carries a lot of weight. Um, confessing health and prosperity over yourself uh, every day, multiple times a day if you have to, um, is very important. Um, and then certainly using stress reduction techniques, meditation, um, prayer, um, that's been shown to have a, a really good impact on, on stress levels and overall health. Um, and the point here is make this a, a part of your daily routine. Um, if you, if you make this a daily practice, you'll, you'll see results for sure.